Along the rocky coast of the Pacific, sea meets land in a rush of timeless beauty. Much of the coastline seems inhospitable at best, treacherous to larger forms of life. Chaotic and violent as the ocean appears on the surface, beneath its churning waves is a quiet world filled with living things. Forests of kelp rise from the ocean floor protecting massive schools of fish, as well as stranger creatures, like this floating Medusa jellyfish. The richness and diversity of undersea life matches that of the land. Here, in a swaying world as colorful and fertile as any on Earth, each creature finds its own rhythm. Though we usually think of mammals as land animals, many live in the sea. They range in size from the 60-ton blue whale, one of the largest creatures that has ever lived on Earth, to the 50-pound sea otter, one of the most clever and resourceful. Midway in size are the pinnipeds, seals, sea lions, and walruses. Like all mammals, they must breathe air, but some can remain submerged for more than a half hour. Even though they spend most of their lives at sea, they need land as much as they need air. Each in their own season, seals and sea lions gather on shore to give birth and to breed. The most favored marine mammal habitat in the world is the Eastern North Pacific, from Baja to Hawaii to the Aleutians. Six types of seals commonly breed in this area. One of the most extensive breeding ranges, stretching from Southern California to the Gulf of Alaska, belongs to the stellar sea lion. The largest member of the sea lion family, a stellar's bull may reach 12 feet in length and weigh more than a ton. Though females are considerably smaller, both sexes have muscular necks with thick manes of coarse hair. During the mating season, seals and sea lions 
become much more gregarious than most land mammals. For the Stellars, this season begins in May, when the bulls arrive at their ancestral mating beaches after months of feeding in the open sea. All along the Pacific coast, rocky islands and sandy beaches provide more or less convenient rookeries for several species. The harbor seal is one of the most widely distributed. It belongs to the family of true seals. Members of this family lack external ear flaps and swim by propelling themselves with their hind flippers while steering with their shorter front ones. With its streamlined body, the harbor seal is superbly adapted for life underwater. But of all seals, it spends the most time hauled out on land, resting, since it's apparently unable to sleep while afloat. Instead of migrating between land and the open ocean, like most seals, the harbor seal hugs the coast. A skilled hunter, it eats mostly fish, which it chases among the kelp beds, along rocky reefs, and even up into freshwater rivers. Unlike the more common harbor seal, the Guadalupe fur seal is quite rare, with only about 1,500 in existence. It breeds only on Guadalupe Island, off the coast of Baja, though it often ranges as far north as the Channel Islands. Located only a few miles off the coast of Southern California, Channel Islands National Park, and especially the island of San Miguel, provide a safe haven for many types of sea mammals. Broad beaches make ideal birthing and breeding grounds for fur seals and sea lions, as well as for the elephant seal. Largest of the pinnipeds, it's named not only for its size, but for its prominent proboscis. Sharing San Miguel Island with the elephant seal is the northern fur seal which forms the largest harem groups of any marine mammal. All male seals have several mates, but a northern fur seal bull may have as many as a hundred. Fur seals belong to the family of eared seals in that they have external ear flaps and their hind flippers rotate forward. This enables them to raise their bodies off the ground and move more easily on land by waddling on all four flippers. Fur seals differ from sea lions and true seals by having a dense coat of underfur. This, in addition to a thick layer of blubber, insulates them in cold seas. Of all the fin-footed creatures called pinnipeds, the most familiar is the California sea lion. Agile and intelligent, it's the one most often seen in zoos and circuses. By contrast, the northern elephant seal is massive and ungainly. A large bull may weigh 8,000 pounds and stretch 20 feet from nose to tail. Five toenails on each front flipper are perhaps vestigial traces of an otter-like land-dwelling ancestor.
Baby elephant seals are born in January on San Miguel, shortly after the females arrive to join the males. Each pregnant cow gives birth to a single woolly-coated pup, which may weigh up to 100 pounds at birth. Meanwhile, the bulls, or beach masters, guard their harems. Elephant seal milk is the richest of any mammals, and the young seals grow quickly. But mother elephant seals are not interchangeable, and a female will attack any strange baby that tries to nurse. A seal pup separated from its mother faces great hazards. Though they seem cruel, the females will not actually try to kill it. But a lost pup may be crushed by one of the huge bulls. Like all seals, the cow elephant seals are very protective of their own offspring but the babies stay with their mothers for only a month or so before being weaned. The females are only slightly territorial, spending most of their energy on their young. But for the bulls, territory is everything. Some battles are quickly resolved, but other fights go on for hours until both opponents are battered and bloody. Bulls don't fight over particular cows, but rather to control the sections of beach that will give them access to the most females. During the breeding season, the bull's nose is gorged with blood, and its neck is padded with a thickened shield of skin, which often becomes deeply scarred. Swinging their heavy upper bodies like battering rams, the bulls slash away at each other. Though wounds are frequent and severe, they heal quickly, and death from such fighting is rare. None of the onlookers seems to take all this commotion very seriously. Immature bulls are ignored or rejected by the females. Instead, the cows favor the beach masters, great bulls whose huge bulk would seem to be able to crush them.
the act of mating is brief. Then the female turns away to begin her long 11-month gestation period. Younger males are generally not successful at establishing territories, but for all bulls, the rigors of the mating season are many. As with some other pinnipeds, elephant seal bulls are kept so busy defending their dominance that they may not eat for up to three months. When the mating season ends in March, the adults return to the sea. The young are left behind on the beaches to live off their blubber until instinct or hunger tells them to take to the water and learn to feed. Not all pinnipeds go through such intense mating conflicts as those of the elephant seal. California sea lions, for example, arrive at Seal Rock in May, the males first and the females about two or three weeks later. Though the bulls bark fiercely, their quarrels seem playful compared with those of their larger cousins and conflicts are resolved by ritualized display. All pinnipeds have excellent eyesight and hearing, both above and below water, and their barking voices, loud and raucous on land, are just right for sending signals underwater. Sea lion pups do not take to water instinctively, but must be taught to swim. This mother tries to persuade her little one that it would be fun to join the other seals underwater. With her coaxing, the pup takes the plunge, but seems to remain unconvinced. Given a few more tries, the young sea lion will soon be swimming gracefully with the others. Sea lions and fur seals both belong to the family of eared seals. They use their flippers in exactly the reverse style of true seals, like the harbor seal. They propel themselves with their large front flippers while using their hind flippers to steer. The relationship between pinnipeds and humans has often been stormy. Over the centuries, seals have been hunted for their fur, meat, and oil, and for their alleged competition with man for fish. Today, most civilized nations have laws to protect marine mammals from uncontrolled harvesting and some may not be hunted at all. 
but many still die in fishing nets. And some fishermen who complain about competition would like to see the laws relaxed. Seals have other enemies also, the most deadly of which is the shark. Sharks are unpredictable creatures. If a shark is not hungry, it may completely ignore potential prey. Or it may take a bite, just to see if it is hungry. This curious sea lion seems to sense that the blue shark poses little danger. Of all sharks, the most deadly to humans as well as to seals is the great white. Over 20 feet long, with powerful jaws studded with rows of razor-sharp teeth, there is no more menacing creature in the world. The largest flesh-eating fish in the sea, it rivals the killer whale as the number one eater of seals. But the great white shark is often a man-eater by mistake. To the shark, a seal is edible, and from a shark's eye view, a person on a shorty surfboard looks much like a seal. Of all the reports of great white shark attacks on humans, in most cases, the person is bitten rather than eaten, a fine distinction that may be lost on the victim. The shark is simply testing for edibility. And naturally, it rejects anything that tastes like fiberglass, neoprene, or suntan oil. But by then, of course, it's often too late. Seals and sea lions are among the most graceful and agile of all creatures. They have the added appeal that much of their swimming behavior seems playful, done for the sheer joy and pleasure of feeling the water go by. As with many forms of play, the effect of this water ballet is to make the seal a more efficient hunter. Its fishing style may seem carefree and casual, but for a creature whose body is vulnerable to heat loss, it's important not to expend more energy than a situation requires. Even diving in formation is a technique of coordinated hunting. If one seal misses a fish, another will be there to get it. But many a fish has probably gotten away, while well-fed seals or sea lions made a game out of hunting.
take great interest in the land-bound creatures that we call wildlife. But the pinnipeds are just as much a part of our natural heritage, and they form a link between the ever-changing land and the timeless patterns of the sea. Man has preyed on the pinnipeds for centuries, thinking of their value only in terms of fur, blubber, and ivory tusks. Now that attitude has changed, and we recognize seals and sea lions as the intelligent and charming creatures they are. If we continue to preserve their rookeries and protect them from fishermen's nets, we will, year after year, delight in each new season of the seals. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.